On this Remembrance Day, we here at the Summerland Museum and Archives wanted to remember not only the men that served, but the women as well. World War II started on September 1st, 1939, when Hitler invaded Poland, and on September 10th, Canada officially joined the war. During the first two years of the war, due to a shortage of male recruits, the military and government were forced to revise the labor legislation and open the first of the three female military divisions. On July 2, 1941, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, WAAF, was established, and it's known to be the first division of the military to allow women to assume roles other than nursing. Many who enlisted were attracted by recruitment posters, pamphlets, and the WD precision squad that traveled across Canada. Approximately 200 women enlisted during the initial call, and 150 were chosen to serve. Soon thousands would follow. In 1942, the WAAF was then renamed to the Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division, and they were popularly referred to as WDs, and were subject to the same laws, discipline, and liabilities as the men. The Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division was a non-combatant element of the Royal Canadian Air Force and followed the slogan, We Serve That Men May Fly, and was established to replace male Air Force personnel so that they would be available for combat-related duties. During this time, the Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division had general recruitment guidelines, such as between ages of 21 and 41, pass all medical tests, be at least five feet tall, a normal weight, accepted in high school, not married or have children under care, and not hold a civil service appointment. When the Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division was first established, there were only nine trades open for women to join, and as the years progressed, the women were able to work in 69 of 102 jobs. Some of the jobs included meteorology, traffic control, telephone operators, drivers, fabric workers, hospital assistants, instrument mechanics, parachute riggers, photographers, air photo interpreters, intelligence officers, instructors, weather observers, pharmacists, and lastly, police. 17,000 women served in the Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division, and by 1944, approximately 1,500 women were stationed overseas before it was disbanded in 1946. And of those 17,000, 14 were residents of Summerland. The Canadian Women's Army Corps, CWAC, was the second military division to be established on August 13, 1941. This is following about a month after the Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division was established in July. The primary objective of the CWAC was to release men of non-combatant roles and fill the shortages of Army support staff. Recruitment posters, booklets, film, magazine and newspaper advertisements, and radio announcements proved to reach all over Canada, as about 50,000 young women enlisted and more than half served. Most of these women enlisted through patriotism and uniform, and others for adventure, but some also enlisted to be close to family that was already serving. The general recruitment guidelines are similar to those in the RCAFWD, such as in excellent health, at least five feet tall, 105 pounds, give or take 10 pounds, with no dependents, a minimum of grade eight education, and between the ages of 18 to 45, Every woman who enlisted went through basic training 
in either Vermilion, Alberta or Kitchener, Ontario. Women with university education were trained up to eight weeks and specialized training could take up to six months. Even though they were not allowed to enter combat, these women performed essential services both at home and overseas and were only paid two-thirds that the men were. The CWAC was not initially a part of the army and were not subject to their laws, but on March 13, 1942, the Canadian Women's Army Corps became an essential part of the army. Its laws and able to assume army titles and badges of rank. We serve that men may fight, was their slogan, and these brave young women paved the way for the future generations to have equality and to work in the technical and mechanical fields, with up to 55 trades filled by the end of World War II. This included office personnel, dental and medical technicians, telephone operators, cooks, typists, stenographers, canteen workers, vehicle drivers, radio mechanics, messengers, and quartermasters. 22,000 women served in the Canadian Women's Army Corps before it was disbanded in August 1946. Eight of those women were Summerland residents. The last to be established was the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service, WRCNS, or Wrens, on July 31, 1942. The Wrens was modeled after the Women's Royal Naval Service in the UK, which had been active during the First World War. Since the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service was so closely modeled after the Women's Royal Naval Service, the initial leadership positions were filled by British Wrens on loan. Most positions available were to release men for active duty as the Wrens were non-combatant roles. The initial enlistment was 67 women who went through a probationary course and entered basic training in HMCS Conestoga in Galt, Ontario. Most women were recruited in non-commissioned ranks and over 7,000 women had served in the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service by 1946. While the women primarily assumed administrative roles, they also are remembered most popularly for staffing the operational map plots in command headquarters and for taking on the bulk of the duties at various naval signal intelligence sites on both coasts. Most were stationed in Canada and some in the U.S. About 500 members were stationed overseas in London, Plymouth, and Londonderry and filled up to 39 trades, such as cook, wardroom attendant, supply assistant, general clerk, confidential book corrector, secretary, coder, telephone switchboard operator, teletype operator, plotter, wireless telegraphist, motor transport, and sick birth attendant. Of the 7,000 women who served in the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service, two were Summerland residents. Even though these women served in non-combatant roles, they played an integral part in the war. They allowed the men to leave their positions and go into combat while the women held down the home front. Without these women, history would have probably played out differently. So, let's remember these strong and brave women for making the choice to serve their country. They deserve to be recognized. Here are the names of the Summerland residents who served in World War II. From the Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division, Nancy Angus. 
Margaret Dixon, Florence Doherty, Helen Hermiston, Winnie Harvey, Ruth McClarity, Dorothy McPhillips, Sybil Monroe, Joan Nesbitt, Muriel Scriver, Mary Scriver, Betty Slater, Janet Strawn, Eileen Tomlin. From the Canadian Women's Army Corps, Ruby Baldwin, Gladys Daniels, Amy Gold, Jean Gold, Betty Strawn, Noreen Thompson, Ruth Barrier, Helen Pitfield. And lastly, from the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service, Joan Rowley, Nellie Temple.